Hello everyone, it's a beautiful spring day and last week I received a very interesting set of questions by a certain Christopher Maida about basically what it takes to be a paleo artist, what it takes to be someone who makes a living earning money from paintings, drawings and reconstructions of dinosaurs and other extinct animals. It was an interesting person to ask this question to because I don't make money professionally from paleo art. And right before beginning, I can state that there are people out there like John Conway, Joshua Knuppe, Mark Witten, among others, also old masters such as John Sibic and so on, who are far better able to answer this question than I was. But still, I felt honored that Christopher picked me to ask this question. And maybe it had to do with the fact that a sheaf of my paleo art illustrations were used as an online gallery for these clickbait websites, websites, you know, boardpanda.com and stuff like that. So basically they took a bunch of my illustrations from my website and ran them uh, with a caption such as this artist imagines dinosaurs such as you've never seen them before. And I was honored to be honest. So maybe it was that spat of attention which brought me to Christoph's spotlight. And just to note, this happens in the early spring months of 2018. Okay. So he asked me these questions. And I realized that some other people have also asked me these questions. And even though I just told you that I'm not the best person to answer them, because I don't really make any money from paleo art. I just do it for its own passion, I guess. I will still try to answer them to the best of my ability. And okay, here we go. Christoph says, hello, my name is Christopher Maida. I'm a college student interested in paleo illustration as a career path. Particularly, I am interested and amateurly experienced in depictions of dinosaurs of basically all types, early cetaceans and hominids. But even without that focus in mind, there is a lot I need to know about successfully entering and navigating that field. Okay, best of luck. So I want to ask a few basic questions, which I can only hope are the right ones to ask. Of course, I'm humbled that you asked me. Here goes. Okay. Here we are with, I think, 10 questions on what it takes to be a paleo artist. Okay, number one. Who hires paleo illustrators? Who hired you initially? And where do you think the patterns of paleo artists exist, exist now? Okay, right off the bat, nobody hired me as a paleo artist. It was just my own passion for years and years. I was always interested in extinct animals, especially some of the bizarre ones. And I've been drawing them pretty much for decades now. And of course, you may know that in 2012, this led to our collaboration with John Conway and Darren Nash. And we published All Yesterdays, the book which I wrote and did a few illustrations for. Then came All Your Yesterdays, and that was a kind of fan art compilation project. And then the floodgates were open. Nobody hired me, but I can tell from my friends, such as Joshua Knuppe, Emily Willoughby, and John Conway, and others that it usually comes down to one, your recognition as a paleo artist online and offline, and two, the personal relations you establish with certain um, people who control basically who gets paid for, for dinosaur art. 
But you know, don't get any high hopes. It's a very, what I would call a low energy ecosystem in terms of money. But um, if you want to get hired, you could increase your chances by attending zoology conventions, museum conventions. You could even try TED ZooCon organized in London by Darren and John. But it's a like gathering of jolly people and you know you need to kind of build up on your social skills which at the beginning was kind of difficult for me too so go to these events even you could go to your local museums and always have a set of portfolios with you and these portfolios should be i think a4 size colorful printouts of your 10 maximum 12 best works okay no more go to the copy shop in the u.s there's kinko's i don't know what they have elsewhere in the world go to the copy shop and have a dozen of them printed i'm proud printed out and then have them spiral bound you know like college notebooks with a kind of tiny white metal spiral and in this always make sure you include your education your cv your credentials your email your telephone number and basically do it like a job application so give these out to whoever you meet in the field could be people at a conference could be people at a zoo people at a museum people at the science departments or geology or biology departments of local universities because that's also another venue sometimes illustrators find work to illustrate new discoveries new specimens but once again this is a very low energy ecosystem in the initial stages you should consider yourself lucky if you get paid i don't know 50 dollars or something and there will be cases where people will expect pro bono work from you and it's up to you whether to accept these or not i would accept a lot of them in the early phases of my career but once again i don't have a career as a polio artist anyways so that's it follow the money museums scientists conferences elbow contacts you know it's all like social game art is a social game money is a social game money for art is a social social game okay two is it really even a matter of being hired for salaried work per se or a paleo in paleo illustrator's income mostly from scattered commissions i think i answered this just now a paleo illustrator's income in the beginning stages of his or her life is from somewhere that has not got anything to do with paleo art i mean look at me i make money as an english editor for advertising companies and museums because i live in a mysterious land where people know crock shit about english or even the language they are speaking you know so that's my lucky break try to find jobs could be working at a bookstore could be working at an art supply store where you could have a basic income cut out your living expenses if you could cut them any further and basically at these stages of your life the early career building stages time is your biggest asset buy time make sure you of course survive but you know if you can move back with your parents and have your own time to spend on your own projects so that was an oblique answer to question number two usually it is always from scattered commissions i mean I don't know any paleo artists who are in hired for salaried work you know even big magazines like national geographic or something they commission work to various people 
because you don't really have this kind of economical situation where oh my god we're discovering new things every day of the week and quick oh my god it's a lizard someone illustrate this it doesn't really work like this salaried work occurs in situations where there's a constant demand for work and paleo art is not such a field art i guess is not such a field the only cases i can think of with any kind of creative endeavor being linked to salaried work is for these sometimes for example these fashion companies hire photographers because they manufacture a lot of clothes models and they always have a photographer on payroll so he or she can go take pictures of these dresses or pants or whatever you know paleo art does not have this kind of turnover so I'm afraid not okay three how can I approach potential clients where am I likely to find them I think I answered this just before conferences universities just make portfolios of your work actual portfolios online work is fine but you're competing with a lot of other things in another person's computer you know their attention span is small but if you have an actual portfolio on your desk you got more chance four what's an effective way to get initial exposure and public recognition okay i'll give you a little hint here let's say you made an illustration for i don't know they discovered a new kind of bird or something and you made a drawing for them you could write a press release about this incident or take the press release and modify it and send this news to local newspapers for example if you live in santa fe new mexico and you illustrated this bird hypothetically you could go to all the local newspapers in santa fe or new mexico or wherever you live with a kind of press release saying santa fe artist illustrates extinct bird you know what i'm saying work the local angle and i mean it's surprising half of the work is writing press releases and sending it to people and you kind of realize that this is a game of exposure media and just a buyer's market really but basically always talk about your work talk about your achievements work the local angles if you have them obviously this works better if you're in a small place called santa fe but in if you live in new york it's difficult because the city is chock full of artists and creatives and illustrators mm, so that's that for public recognition number five do professional paleo illustrators take in or hire assistants <laughs> i wish could becoming such an assistant be a viable way to support myself well i said i wish but in fact mm, if you go to one of these big studios like blue rhino or wherever you could try interning there and i don't know if established paleo illustrators take in assistance because it's a very lonely solitary line of work and these people don't get paid a lot so they don't usually get to hire people i really have no idea how i can answer this question okay number six let me have a sip of <coughs> warm water okay are there any parts of the country where a paleo artist is more likely to find work i'm from florida by the way nice state full of reptiles i would like to live there actually if i lived in the u.s by the way with almost every intention of remaining in the u.s okay so if you live in the u.s you're particularly in the capital of the paleo art world because most major institutions museums who publish these books or pay money for exhibit illustrations they are located in the u.s 
you're I mean already one step ahead of the game I mean there's no kind of place or a city or a country in the world where everybody is like hustling paleo work I wish that country or city existed you know but it doesn't exist but once again as I told you if you go from these international conferences these SPL Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meetings things like Tetsukan if you always attend these gatherings you will get to meet the core group who deals with paleo and paleo illustration and through them I think you would have more chances of finding work so there's no specific country it's not a place it's a spirit a state of mind one that men could whisper but anything louder than a whisper it would disappear that kind of place you know it's a cabal of maybe 200 people who are actively involved with paleo art basically okay what are the major risks and benefits of contributing to a touring studio such as blue rhino oh okay so blue rhino is a museum exhibit studio that's really out of this world in terms of quality and just overall awesomeness of their sculptures i mean not only are their shapes very lifelike and beautiful but also the animals look like they're alive they use cutting edge materials uh, there's a link in this video description blue rhino studios go check them out i mean i don't have much experience in this matter but i guess there could only be benefits from contributing to their work by the way if you get to work with an established company such as blue rhino and if you have had your artwork published before in other places if you have some sort of experience after a point you will realize don't accept pro bono work just be a salaried employee for them because skills aren't cheap i mean don't sell yourself cheaply but of course if you're in the beginning of your career also don't judge yourself too highly either it's a delicate balance in that matter okay number eight 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 does it help to have a niche or can being known from one focus while appearing to ignore other things be harmful for my chances of being approached for work or would my appeal to people with an interest in that niche be enough to outweigh that risk okay i'll give you a very blunt answer if you're good with mammals plants fish and birds if you specialize in these four groups you will have more chance of getting work because these are really niche art illustrations especially especially the talent it takes to render birds convincingly is really godlike and for example there are artists like peter shoten who really specialize in these amazing depictions of birds and you know you could actually see that when they attempt to paint a dinosaur like a big heavy bodied numbered dinosaur they struggle at the same time people who specialize in drawing i don't know just marine reptiles or whatever they struggle when they try to draw birds or plants convincingly i mean there's really no scientific basis for this it's just that plants have a certain look about them that takes a lifetime to master so do birds so do certain types of fish and of course mammals i think mammals are a whole different career because there are intensely different methods which people use to reconstruct their faces i mean if you're great with for example making reconstructions of theropod dinosaurs you could still pardon the expression suck ass when it comes to fleshing out the skull of a mammal convincingly because mammals have lots of face muscles and fur and biddly bobs on their faces and it takes 
not years, a lifetime to master. I mean, look at works by hidden geniuses like Ville Sinkonen. I hope I spelled your name right. Or Tom Bjorklund or the Kinnis brothers, Kenis and Kenis. And you could see that these people are playing a completely different game. They are like demigods of paleo art. And actually you could ask these questions to them too. They would give, I think, more useful answers than I am giving now. So there. Okay, number nine. What mistakes do you think are made by youngling paleo artists in terms of finding work? I don't know. I don't think there are many mistakes you can make because the field is so narrow to begin with. If you're good at this, someone will notice you. If they will pay you, is a whole other ball game. I think the only mistake one can make is trying to look like a total expert at the beginnings of their career. It's a kind of narrow balance to strike. I mean, then again, sometimes, you know, that also works. But let's say if you've never had a published work before and people can almost never admit this to themselves. But if your artwork isn't, let's say, up to the quality of the artwork, of certain other masters in the field. And yet, if you still go around with like uh, John Squimby, Master Paleo Illustrator, but if your works are not quite masterly, you know, people will notice that. It's a delicate balance to strike between humility and kind of elbowing in to a market so best of luck i don't think there are many risks there i don't think there are many mistakes unless you go out and call yourself like the maestro of sauropods or like i'm a virtuoso of theropod art or something you know don't be don't fly so high i don't think there are any mistakes okay and number 10 here we go what other illustration fields are receptive to people who have previously specialized in, specialized in paleo illustration? For that matter, if the first job I land as an illustrator isn't related to paleo, would, what kind of work would be illustrate, useful and attractive as experience for me if I pursue the paleo line of work in the future? Well, this is actually a, quite a smart question. So, art has a strange cladistics of its own. Just as I told you before, out of entirely arbitrary reasons, it takes completely different sets of skill to render mammals, fish, birds and plants and reptiles. Same with art. It takes a completely different artist to render machines. It takes a completely different artist to render people it takes a completely different artist to render buildings and I think paleo artists fall into the group of the completely different artists who can render living things I don't think you can go wrong with that I mean look for example David Peters this kind of heretical people hate him because he has extremely cranky theories about reptile evolution but you know there's a lesson you could take from him that he was an illustrator commercial illustrator for adverts james gurney the famous artist of the dinotopia mythos he is a landscape painter and he also paints editorial illustrations so I think the only kind of illustration that could decrease your chances of getting paleo work in the future would be this extremely 
symbolic and kind of cartoonish kind of illustrations that you know the New Yorker for example has covers like this that I mean it's not entirely realistic it's kind of abstract and a little cartoony so if you go along that direction the the New Yorker cover art branch of illustration you could be straying far from the paleopath but I think you would have a far more lucrative and livable career as an illustrator too because magazines like New Yorker pay ambiguity sells non-figurative art and illustration sell so that's a opposite path to the path of paleo art which is more realistic renderings of creatures and people and objects so if you focus on that path you would have more chances of getting paleo work okay so these were 10 questions by Christoph Maida questions which I hope other paleo artists could find helpful and let me also contribute with some other tips of my own for example if you want to do paleo art always observe and draw from live animals go to a zoo sketch the birds sketch the reptiles even sketch the mammals and you would see that how different you would see how different living animals are from fossils or fossil reconstructions i mean if one was to view paleo art from a completely alien lens if this person or observer had never seen artwork before paleo art would be a bit like egyptian artwork you know you know ancient egypt on those walls they had this weird perspective this kind of strangely repeated tropes that look realistic but are actually but actually constitute a completely different visual language of their own i think that's where most paleo art is at animals don't look real at all and i think some of my work is like this too real animals look way different than lines around the skeleton go study them go study muscles if you have any means look at the anatomy of these animals sometimes in zoology departments in universities they have these dissections of dead alligators or turtles or emus even and study the muscles and bones and how they come together it's a completely different world so yeah study real things that's one nice tip also hmm i don't know i mean if you want to look for a university path you could try applying to these schools like savannah school of art ringling school of art i mean apply to schools that teach illustration and not contemporary art you know and you could also specialize in concept design and concept art and certainly like game companies and tv shows and series really pay a lot of money for artwork that resembles paleo art but don't expect your clients to have scientific accuracy on the forefront i think to this day and for the foreseeable future the biggest boss that commissions paleo art would be the hearts of paleo artists themselves it's a passion it's almost a disease it's something you just feel compelled to do and even if life takes you to a completely different path just keep scratching that itch it's a contribution to the human spirit that few other fields can have and even though not many people appreciate it you will have a constant line of admirers for decades and dare i say even centuries to come it's soul food paleo art so i hope i could answer your questions if you have any more questions please list them in the comment section and 
as always, subscribe to my channel, like this video and share it. And that's that. Have a nice day everybody.